2003 living with an Alpha Julia Quadrifolio, a great weekend. Summer Sun, Family, Classic Racing and an Alfa Romeo Gilia Quadrifolio, it was one of those days that leaves you blissfully satisfied, like simultaneously devouring a box set and a box of Lindor milk truffles. Castle Coombe wasn't just hosting the West Country Cracker Race meeting, but also a gathering of my motorsport bred in laws, including the introduction of two month old nephew Yuan and my daughters to motorsport. The Oakhams welcomed the Julia into the fold. This is the first car of yours I've liked, said father in law Chris creakily lowering himself into the subterranean driver's seat and fiddling with paddles that combine a tactile springiness and a percussive click. Then, laden with camping chairs and children, we left the Alpha in the Castle Coombe car park slash field and headed for the action, leaving a gathering of Wiltshire Ralph Easty to snap selfies while decoding the QV's air vents and carbon fiber details. Camp Corner gives a great view down the street to the Bobby Chicane, then a swivel to watch the racers negotiate our wide, fast right-hander before gunning it to the start-slash-finish line, all within striking distance of the essential ice cream van and toilets. And the racing got better as the sun grew hotter and the clutches of 99s got digested. The Mini driven by Julian and Matthew Howell utterly dominated the first race, leaving me plenty of time to marvel at the 60s Alpha Julia Sprint and GT, their twin cam fours buzzing them around the track. They looked like the matchbox saloons I played with as a kid, and weren't much bigger up close, a good half a meter and perhaps 400 bhp down on my car. Next was the Jaguar Saloon and GT Championship, which had me reminiscing about Tom Walkinshaw racers and my cousin Mark, who always looked cool smoking around in various XJs. By now the kids were really getting into it, backing the cars with the most eye-catching paint, as a Marcos diced with some triumphs and Lotus Ellens in race 3. The Formula Ford Championship, taking my father-in-law back to his days piloting Malik race cars, was interrupted after a big shunt at Quarry. Out came the safety car, appropriately a Civic Type R from the nearby Honda plant, before Josh Fisher charged from 6th to win. Then it was time for the 25-mile drive home. For a cross-country trip like this, the pre-flight checks are simple, pull hollow transmission selector back into the left to lock in manual mode, and ensure the drive mode selector is in dynamic to put the exhaust into Pavarotti Bello, the suspension into lockdown and the Biturbo V6 into supersonic. Everyone who drives the Quadrifoglio comes back muttering about how fast it is. But it's also captivatingly mechanical and incredibly sensual. The V6 idles with grumbles and vibrations that rock the driving seat, more akin to the racers we were watching than the sanitized engines that are more commonplace today. Pin the throttle and let the revs climb in every gear, waiting, waiting to pull the paddle. Then there's what feels like a moment of inertia, of calm, before the cogs mesh and drive is catapulted rearwards again. And, when you do have to back off, there's the wonderfully evocative chatter of overrun often accompanied by a bang bang salvo of exhaust gas being dumped. Late afternoon and the B3109 is deserted. 
so I straddle the white lines approaching corners, every nuance of the road transmitted by the firmed up dampers, feeling the outboard suspension brace the car and the tires grip as we swoop into the bends. The hypersensitive controls heighten the Julia's sense of alertness, the throttle is hair trigger, a little too much, the effortless steering responds like a sprinter to the gun. If it all sounds near spiritual for me, and damn enjoyable for my game wife too, the kids are deeply ambivalent and fall asleep.